Let's start this event. <laughs> okay, now going back to the process of the A to D converter. to the uh, process we said that uh, a to d converter contains two important two important stages first one first stage will be the sampling and the second stage will be the holding circuit so we are going to talk about uh, uh, this diagram okay look at the beginning we have a low pass filter low pass filter well then it's followed by sample and hold circuit then we have a quantizer and encoder really this diagram represents the operation of the a to d uh, converter now i'm going to talk about each block individually to understand the operation of the a to d converter look please analog signal is passed through a low pass filter for what to, to make band limitation. Of course, why we are going to make band limitation? Because we sometimes we have unwanted signal may pass to the system. Okay, so we have to what? We have to reject any unwanted signal by using what? By using this low pass filter. So only the interested signal will be passed by using what? By using this low pass filter. Now, second block contains sample and hold circuit okay sample and hold circuit by now i'm going to talk about uh, this sample and hold circuit uh, let me share the uh, screen of the tablet okay stop the sharing now i'm going to share the ipad screen Well, yes. Well, 
we have shared the well it's okay I'm using the pen okay now please look at uh, the board and see what's going on we said that we have a sampler okay then it's followed by a capacitor okay as i think in the engineering circuit analysis uh, you have studied the transient hmm? okay have you studied the transient or not of course you have studied the transient and you have studied the uh, capacitor and the uh, inductors okay capacitors and inductors do you remember the VL, LDI by DT, hmm? IC, CDVC by DT? All of these are what are formulas for the capacitor and the inductor. You know that the capacitor rejects sudden change in voltage, sudden change in voltage. So VC of O minus or O plus equals to what? VC of O minus. Okay, you have studied these things where in the circuit, engineering circuit analysis. It means that what? This formula means that what? Means that the capacitor rejects sudden change in voltage. Okay, rejects sudden change in the voltage. So what we are going to do, we have to we have to use the capacitor as a what? As a as a storage. So after clarifying these concepts. Let us go to the uh, to the operation of this switch. Let's go to the operation of this switch and uh, look at. For example, this will be an analog signal. Okay, this is an analog signal, and this one will be a stream of impulses. Okay. Now, these impulses are spaced by TS, okay? Can you see? Now, these uh, uh, impulses are spaced by TS, regular distance TS. Now, if you are going to multiply the analog signal, okay, this analog signal by the COM function or the sampling function, we can get the following signal, okay? Well, we can get the discrete signal. So the operation or the action of this, this switch, I mean, it's close and open every T, TS, TS seconds. Well, so this will generate the discrete signal shown in red, okay? So the operation of the TS switch will be like this function, stream of impulses. It will generate stream of impulses multiplied by the uh, original signal to get what to get the discrete time signal now what will happen in the next time in the next step the value of each sample will be stored where in this capacitor okay and the capacitor will holds or stores the value of each sample during the what during the conversion process okay now to illustrate what do you mean by the conversion process, for example, say I'm going to ask you something, something very easy. Say, for example, 200 by 300, for example, asking you multiply 200 by 300, okay? You will need a time to find the answer, okay? Of course, the time response for everyone will differ from each other. Well, so this time, I mean the time, up to getting the question and to get the answer, this time is called what? It's called response time for everyone, okay? To answer the question, you need time for responsing, okay? So this time is called response time. Again, for the same thing, look, for the ADC converter, for the ADC converter, here we have an ADC converter, ADC, we are going to put an analog signal here or analog sample here. And here we have output, okay? Putting X and getting what? Getting the output. Really, we have a time called what? Called conversion time. 
conversion time you need a time called what called conversion time in order to what in order to convert in order to convert the analog value x into its equivalent digital value during the conversion process you have to make the sample value constant by what by storing uh, the value of the sample using a capacitor okay this is about what about uh, the conversion process of the a2d converter next stage will be what will be the quantizer okay quantizer or say it's approximator or rounding now i i'm going to explain what do we mean by the quantizer rapidly uh, then in next coming lectures inshallah we have detailed information about the quantizer but by now i'm going to talk about it rapidly now as you know in the digital systems for example when you talk about the three bits for example three bits what are the combinations of the three bits okay three zeros okay one zero 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 one one uh, zero, zero one zero so, sorry one one zero 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 one one zero one zero one one and one 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 okay so three bits will give us what eight combinations okay eight or say eight levels in the form of when you talk about uh, the quantization here we can say three bits gives us eight levels why two to power be small if you are going to talk about four bits at that time we have two to power four 16 bits and so on okay this is about what about the number of bits and the level generated by each bit bit combination well so here we have the following look at if you are talking about say about two bits only at that time 2 to power 2, we have what? We have only four levels. Let us illustrate these four levels. First level will be what? At 0. Yani B1 and B2, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, and 1, 1. First level represents what? 0, 0. Second level represents 1, 2, and 3. Okay. This one level zero, level one, level two, and level three. Well, by now the voltage, the voltage is divided into four level. Okay, now let us uh, talk about an, a simple example, numerical example to understand what's going on. Now. Assume that the VDC of the circuit or the V full scale of the circuit, okay, V full scale, V full scale equals to 5 volts. Okay, here we have 5 volts. Well, how many numbers of levels we have? We have 2 to power 2 and equals to 4 levels. When we talk about the quantization system or quantizing or quantizer we have a variable called delta f okay or step size delta f equals to v full scale over 2 to power b okay number of bits in this example we have talked about v full scale equals to 5 volt okay and number of levels equal to 4 so delta f will be 1.25 what volts of course okay look please do you hear me or not yes we hear you okay it's good now by now delta f delta f is fixed by 1.25 volt here in this example of course look at it, please level zero still is zero level one mean it's one delta f okay it's one delta f level two means what means two delta f level three we have the three delta f okay so by now we are talking about one delta f two delta f 
and 3 delta F. Well, it's very simple and easy. Up to now, we are talking about simple and easy things. Well, 1 delta F, 2 delta F, and 3 delta F. So what will be the value of the upper level? Huh? What will be the value of the upper level? Of course, of course, it will continue. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. but in magnitude, I, I, I mean, I'm talking about numerical values. Yeah, and 3 delta F, 3.75. Three uh-huh, Jayid. 3.75 is good. Maximum level will be 3.75, okay? Value of the second level will be 2.5. Now, value of the first level will be 1.25. Okay, continue with me, please. Now, assume that, assume that, by now, assume that we have a sample, okay? Signal, this is a signal, okay? In, 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 uh, in green, we are talking about a discrete time signal, okay? Of course, it contains samples. Well, look at it, please. Say this one is one volt, and this one is two volt, and this one is 1.5 volt, for example, okay? The three samples we have. These three samples will be applied to the quantizer, okay? Applied to the quantizer. Look, please. Look at the sample, which, which it, its magnitude equal to two volt, okay? Two volt. Now, we said that second level is 2.5 volt. Now, the first level is what? 1.25. So this sample, I mean the two volt, will lie where? Between the level one and level two, okay? It lies where? Between the level one and the level two. Now, the question is, this sample is nearest to the sample, to the level two or level one? Two volt, this one is 1.25 and the upper level is, is 2.5, okay? Now, this sample level one. Is, is, is better to, to be, to be rounded or approximated to level two or level one? Level one. Why level one? It's greater than level one. Level one is 1.25, no? Okay, look, please. Look, please. If, if, if the sample value is greater than one and a half, of the of the first step or delta f okay at that time it will be, it will be approximated to the upper level yeah no delta f delta f delta f is 1.25 now delta f over 2 chanda 0.625 okay delta f over 2.625 okay now 0.625 plus 1.25, it will be 1.8 something. Now, the sample is equal to what? Is equal to two. So it's greater than one and a half of the delta F, okay? So in this example, the value of this sample will be approximated to level number two, okay? Due to, of course, this approximation, we have what? We have occurred some error. This error is called the quantization error, okay? So, due to this thing, we are going to what? We are going to approximate the sample values either to the what? To the lower level or to the upper level. Of course, doing that will lead to what? Will lead to error. This kind of error is called, is called quantization error. Of course, to enhance the operation, of the quantizer, at that time, we have to what? We have to increase the number of bits. For example, look at, if you are going to consider B equals to four, at that time, two to power B will be 16, and delta F becomes, for example, five over 16. And this time, we have many levels, okay? Look, starting from level zero up to what? Up to level number 15. Okay, and delta F will be five over 16. Of course, in this example, uh, I mean, when we, when we consider B capital equals to 16 bit, 
at that time, we are going to enhance the resolution of the quantizer or the approximator. Well, this is about what? About the quantization, quantizer operation. Please look at an important point here. Now, look at the y-axis. We said that here in y-axis, by now, we don't have the whole magnitudes. We have what? Specific magnitudes, which are what? 2 to power b. So the sing sample value or the single signal value must be one of these levels. I mean, between level number, say, 15 and level number 14, we don't have signals, okay? So the amplitude, again, becomes what? Becomes discrete. Digital signals are called what? Are called discrete time and discrete amplitude. While the discrete time signals are signals which are what? Which, are, which is only uh, defined at uh, time instance TS, called discrete time but continuous amplitude. Digital signals are what? Are discrete time and discrete amplitude. Well, now going back to the uh, slides of the of the uh, PowerPoint, PowerPoint slides. Well, uh, we said that uh, here we have the, the sample and hold circuit, the quantizer and logic circuit. Of course, the logic circuit will be used for what? To encode the uh, bits. We said that after the quantizer, we have some bits, for example, 101, 111, and so on. Okay, uh, this will be uh, encoded using an encoder. Of course, what do you mean by encoder? Either convert the uh, binary bit into hexadecimal, for example, uh, octal, uh, BCD system, and so on. Okay, upon the use of the system. Well, uh, really, these points explain what we have talked about. Okay, you can read it. Uh, later. Now, questions. After this lecture, you have to be able to answer these questions. Sketch a schematic diagram of a typical DSP system. Two, sketch the function of each block drawn in one. Well, what are differences between analog signal and discrete time signal? Of course, the answer for this question will be the analog signal is continuous in time and in amplitude, while the discrete time signal is discrete in time and continuous in amplitude. Question four, what are differences between discrete time signal and the quantized signal? Discrete time signal is a signal which is discrete in time and continuous in amplitude while the quantized signal is a signal which is discrete in time and discrete in amplitude. Of course, question five is very simple and easy. Sketch a schematic diagram of an A to D converter. Okay, this is about uh, this lecture. Now we are going to go to another lecture, which is the uh, uh, sampling. Okay, now we are going to talk about uh, the sampling. Let's go and talk about the sampling. Please write down your names in the chat. Okay, uh, I'm going to uh, depend on the on the names written in the chat as an attendance for you. Okay, now let's go to the uh, lecture three. In lecture three, uh, we are going to talk about the sampling process, which is the heart of the DSP system. <clears throat> okay, now sampling is the acquisition of a continuous, for example, analog signal at discrete time intervals. Okay, at discrete time intervals. And it's a fundamental concept in real time signal processing. Uh, before a while, we talked about sampling. Okay, we said that. The analog signal will be multiplied by COM function or passed through a switch. This switch is on and off every uh, TS. So every TS, we are going to pick a sample from the signal. And it's a fundamental concept in real time signal processing. An example of a sample analog signal is shown in the figure below. 
Note that after sampling, in this case, ideal case, the analog signal is now represented only at discrete times with the values of samples equal to those of the original analog signal at discrete times. Look at the uh, diagram. Please look at this diagram. Uh, this graph is very important. I'm going to talk about uh, this graph. Look, please. In this graph, we have very important points. First of all, look at the range of the signal, please. Range of the signal starts from minus 12 volts and up to what? Up to 12 volts. Really, what do you mean by these two ranges? As I think now you are familiar with the uh, many electronic instruments, okay? For example, we have some electronic instruments working with single battery, okay, of 1.5 volt. At that time, we can say that this instrument is working with VDC, okay, or VCC equals to 1.5 volt, okay? The VCC for this instrument is 1.5 volt. Well. Sometimes we may find another instrument working with, for example, with, with four batteries, okay? Such a electronic instrument, uh, it's VCC equals to what? Equals to six volts, okay? So this is an example for what? For VCCs. Well, practically, when we talk about A to D converter, A to D converter deals with signals with ha which have what? Positive and negative swing, okay? Look at the signal in this example, okay? This signal fluctuates between positive and negative values, okay? So this signal has positive and negative values. When we have such a signals, at that time, we have to consider two VCCs, VCC, plus VCC and minus VCC. Please look at this graph. Now, this graph has what? A plus 12 volt and minus 12 volt. So this minus 12, 12 volts means what? Minus VCC. While the upper one will be what? Will be plus VCC. Is it okay? As I think it's okay. Well, now to understand more and more, okay, now I need annotation. Okay. Look, please. Now, this distance, I mean, from minus 12 to 12, okay, minus 12 to 12 will be what? Will be 24, okay? This is 24 volts. So V full scale for this signal or for this system, V full, okay? V full equals to what? Equals to 24 volts okay now up to uh, up to this point we have talked only about what about the positive and negative vcc and we have determined the v full scale <clears throat> well uh, remaining is the 10 minutes okay up to zoom Reconst uh, restriction. Well, admit all. Well, now let's go back to the uh, to the graph, please. Look. Uh, now, the dotted line. Please look at the graph. Dotted line represents what? Represents the original analog signal. Okay, original analog signal while the straight line okay with black dots is the what is the sample signal or the discrete time signal okay so look at this signal this signal is only defined at these points this one this one this one this one and so on i mean between these two points there is no signal the value of the signal is equal to what equal to zero okay so this kind of signal is called what is called discrete time signal. Okay, discrete time signal. And this is the action of what of the sampling. Okay, so by now we have defined what do you mean by the 
sorry, let's erase that. Okay. Well, now define of the sampling. We're going to define what do you mean by the sampling. Is the process of taking a continuous time signal and representing it by a series of discrete sample. It's realized by multiplying the analog signal by the sampling function S of T. In the sampling, we have two important uh, operations, sampling and the reconstruction process. Sampling, we said that is the multiplying the continuous time signal by a series of discrete samples or a stream of delta of of uh, impulse functions okay to get what to get the sampled signal of course the stream of impulse functions is called what sampling function s of t reconstruction is the process of taking these discrete samples and recreating the associated continuous time signal Okay, so we have two processes, sampling, which will convert the analog signal into what? Into discrete time signal. And we have another operation, which is called the reconstruction. Reconstruction will recreate or reback the analog signal. Well, to understand the sampling process, really, we have two mechanisms. Today, we are going to talk about the time domain me mechanism. In the next week, inshallah, I am going to talk about the frequency domain mechanism. So before talking about the frequency domain mechanism, you have to make a good review about the Fourier series and Fourier transform, please to be able to understand what's going on in the next coming lectures. Otherwise, you will be out of coverage area, okay? So let us talk about the mechanisms of sampling. First mechanism will be, will be the time domain, okay? Time domain uh, sampling. Okay, let's examine, examine the sampling process in closer detail, starting the time domain. The standard paradigm is shown in the following picture. The value of the continuous time signal recorded every T second by multiplying by an impulse train. The area of each pulse formed by the sample version is equal to the highest height of the original signal at the sampling point. Let's see what's going on. This is an what? An analog signal X of T. And this will be what? Will be the sampling function S of T. Okay? Look at, these are what? Are impulses with the same amplitude. Okay? The amplitude of each impulse is equal to one. Well, now, please. Yes. Okay, we are using, yes, we are using screen share. Mm. Okay, now, now uh, the sample, yes, this sample is called what? Delta of T. This one will be delta of T minus, sorry. minus t capital okay this one will be delta of t plus t capital okay so uh, in this way we have what we have a, a sampling function now of course this sample will be delta of t minus 2t delta of t minus 3t and so on okay this is is known by what this is known as as a sampling function 
it is con it contains of it consists of trains of 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 uh, impulse function okay now going back to the concepts of the what of the fourier series uh, i don't know do you remember or not basically you have two kinds of signals energy signal and power signals this signal limits from minus infinity to infinity with period equal to what equal to t or ts okay so this kind of signal is known as what is known as as a power signal now to determine the spectrum of such a signal what we what we need we need the fourier series we have to determine the fourier series for such a signal to determine its frequency components well uh, the signal x of t i mean the analog signal x of t requires what requires fourier transform why it's an energy signal not periodic signal periodic signals are what are power signals and we are going to use the fourier series to determine what to determine their spectrums okay while the energy signals will will be transformed to frequency domain using what using the fourier transformation now again going back to the original concepts of the signal and system when we talk about the two signals multiplied in time well let's see you this one this concept now x of t okay for example x of t multiply uh, multiplied by sorry carry on well dot s of t now i am going to find out the fourier transform for x of t multiplied by s of t of course using fourier transform it will be what it will be cap 